And, you know, if you find yourself like, I just, I have nothing to respond to. Things aren't happening. Or you feel like you're in a plateau or feeling bitter or you're feeling frustrated, all these things. There's looking at the strategy and authority, but there's also looking at your profile lines. Human design reveals who you are energetically and who you came here to be. I'm Dana, human design specialist. And I'm Haley, the human design newbie. Listen in as we explore how leaning into your authentic self is your ultimate path to success. Welcome to the Human Design High Podcast. Let's get into it. Hello, Haley. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> you good? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. 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 Good, good to see good to see you again and um excited to uh get into today's topic it's going to be uh profile centric we're going to be exploring fun. a little bit about profiles but first of all i want to welcome everybody back to the podcast and uh thank you for tuning in once again i'm dana phillips if you don't know me i'm here on the east coast in south carolina <laughs> my daughter haley across the zoom ways <laughs> zoom ways in colorado yep. Yep. Hi, Haley. Hi. Again. <laughs> and we thank you all for being here and indulging us as we have our conversations uh, that we get to see each other now once a week and mm -hmm. have our little chit chats. But I, before we get started, did you have anything you wanted to share? Because I have something I want to share. No, go ahead. No. <laughs> so I have, uh, I have been watching Survivor. <laughs> And which is I never, not you. <laughs> no, I never watched Survivor, but I have a reason for watching Survivor. Mm -hmm. Last year, I had the privilege of having on the podcast Liz Wilcox, and it was mm -hmm. episode 55. I met her online, and uh, she has this email marketing membership that I'm a part of, which I guess in line with today's episode, we're going to be kind of digging in to, to profile and going to be a little exposing, I think, for us, because we're going to be talking <laughs> about maybe some shadow behaviors of profile. Mm -hmm. And this talking about Liz here for a minute and how she has this membership that I'm actually a part of, which is about making email marketing better. And I'm, mm -hmm. if anybody signed up on my email list, you don't get that many emails from me because... <sighs> Is something I'm working on. It's the next thing that I'm tackling is being mm -hmm. more uh, consistent. And well, that's uh, okay. Well, it is, but it isn't. So uh, I apologize. And I hope Liz doesn't hear that. She'll know I'm not sending out emails. <laughs> <laughs> I will be soon. But anyway, so she was on the podcast last year. And during that time, she told me that because she's been in the online space for a long time, and she has been working really hard at setting up her, her business and working the way that works for her because she is a uh, ego projected projector, meaning she she only has two centers defined. Mm -hmm. uh, she has a G center and the well center. And so she has a lot of this openness in her chart. And she's really experienced the effects of burnout and all this other stuff. So she, we had a really great conversation if you go back and listen to it, especially if you're struggling as a projector with burnout and like learning how to manage your life and be successful while also honoring your energy. But anyway, so she had talked about uh, she had her business set up so that she's going to be able to take some time off in the summer. And she was you know, going to be doing that. And it's great. It's awesome. She's going to spend time mm -hmm. with her daughter, whatever. <laughs> so come to find out, no, it's because she was filming Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> and when that came out, just about probably, I guess they're in like week six now, week five or six. I don't know of the, of the show because mm -hmm. I don't watch them live during the week. I've watched on streaming yeah yeah and and so uh she wasn't able to share it until everybody knew who they announced right. the cast and i just can't even believe i watched it and i'm like i can't believe i know her and uh so i usually watch things like that when i'm like making dinner mm -hmm. it's not a sit down and watch things so i can pay attention so i'm starting to watch it and i know she loves loves love love survivor and she's doing really good. She's, she's still on the island. She's not been off, voted off the island yet. So it's mm -hmm. fun as one to see somebody, you know, but two to like, 
know her design and see her design and it's like i know the secret weapon she has <laughs> <laughs> i nobody else knows but um because it's a it's that shows all about human behavior you I know have no i really have no idea what what they do on survivor like yeah. i know you get voted off the island <laughs> and they have to do things question mark <laughs> i know i didn't know either i'm like a big noob but basically yeah they're in the three different one two wait green purple yellow yeah three different tribes <laughs> i don't even know the names of them i just gotta go by the color uh and they're in three different tribes that when they start out i think there's six people in each tribe and each week there's like a challenge and then there's all these crazy side secretive things going on about people being able to find like immunity or i don't i don't know I'm sorry, you might watch it. <laughs> well, there's like things hidden on the island that when they mm -hmm. have their downtime, everybody's kind of searching and and people will lie to each other and they feel the I know they make like, and, yeah, alliances and all this and but I don't. It's, it's there's ones that play the game by being kind of, I don't want to use a bad word, devilish or something, not devilish even, just being more conniving. That's the word I'm looking for, which is not Liz. And um you know, I don't think it's possible for her, but she's very smart. And being a projector and having so much awareness, openness, like she mm -hmm. can really tap into what's going on around her. And one particular scene I saw last night, like it was such a projector thing. Someone was unloading <laughs> and she just looked at it. She listened and then she looked up. She says, do you need a hug? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> She was, anyways, so I really hope she goes all the way. It's it's fun to watch somebody I've uh, done a reading for compete mm -hmm. on that level. So it is if cool. you a Survivor fan, look for Liz Wilcox and keep rooting for her. She's awesome. Um, anyway, so today we are digging in to profile. We're revisiting mm -hmm. profile, but in a new and not, not a new, but in a different angle, I guess, yep. in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be looking at kind of um, shadow behaviors uh, of the profiles in the sense that, because this has kind of come up for me recently because I've been, well, I'm always <laughs> contemplating, self-reflecting, mm -hmm. introspecting, if that's a word. And I thought about how my own profiles, 4-1, mainly just the, the line numbers, how they may be in some way I am like, blocking my own self from doing certain things or uh, achieving certain things mm -hmm. because uh, if you do enough really <laughs> honest looking at your behaviors you can tend to be like oh okay all right i see what i'm doing mm -hmm. here and so when people are digging into their design usually excuse me usually there is a, a purpose to it right i mean you just don't come to this shit by just like accident you're You've... usually looking for some kind of uh direction answer information mm -hmm. direction yeah exactly a way to help you understand yourself maybe get things going uh or in in like today's case maybe as a way to see you know where it is you are getting in your own way in a way mm -hmm. and which is something you really are going to be doing if you're on any kind of quest to get to know yourself <laughs> and as I said, specifically, when you're digging into your purpose and, and trying to realize your purpose and try to really show up in the best way possible to help achieve what it is you're here to do in life, which there's, you know, I should, there's a little caveat there. It's not like an achievement that you won't ever serve your purpose. I think you're going to serve your purpose no matter what. It just may not be in a form that you wanted or intended in sense that you're you're always going to be who you are you're going to serve your purpose you came here but you might not do it in the best expression that you can if that makes sense like you're gonna you're gonna do your life purpose but whether it's an a b or a c grade <laughs> kind of and that sounds bad too because i guess what i what i think about is where i'm focused now is you know, with with my design is more of a building a business, doing work that I love, mm -hmm. and then sharing that and hopefully empowering more people. That's my direction now. And that's part mm -hmm. of my 
purpose if you look at things in my design. I think that's true. But I also know I have already served that purpose uh, in the life I've built so far, but just like in my family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I have help raise you, set I, you up for future success. I mm -hmm. hope I've helped hold the family together. We've managed to always have what we needed. We've gotten through, we may have struggled, but you know, I have to take my part in that. It wasn't just an accident. I mean, <laughs> your dad may have been the one that was actively earning the income, but you know, he probably had help by having my energy around. <laughs> Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so that's what I mean. It's like I'm still fulfilling my purpose, but it's not been the deep down like what I know there's more for me, I guess. Like it's been very enriching and very fulfilling. I gotta mm -hmm. I gotta walk a safe line here because I'm talking mm -hmm. to my child <laughs> to be like, it just <laughs> wasn't enough, Haley. <laughs> I was not thinking that, okay. Oh. <laughs> That's me. I'm thinking for you. <laughs> but no, I, I think I see what you're saying. It's it it may not be you're still gonna fulfill your life purpose, but it may not always necessarily be to the extent maybe that you could have fully done, like you were yeah, saying. There's like, lots of different family ways. did it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, and I think there's different stages of life. I think we touched on that before. You might, in this, especially you're a line six, in this stage of your life, you might be doing this and another mm -hmm. stage doing this and this. So I think you're you're going to be doing that in some way, but I know that most people feel that they're not fully tapped into their full potential. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So anyway, so. One of those ways, someone's <laughs> going to get it. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so I wanted to focus on profile today because it's such a, well, it's fun. I love talking about profile. They I think are profile fun. is a lot of fun. Yeah, because it's something everybody can really um, see themselves in mm -hmm. when you, you know, say things I think about the room. Besides like the type, I think it is one of the easier ways to understand human design. I think it's even easier than type, honestly, oh. because it gives you kind of something that's easier to identify with than like say being a projector at first it's like if i told you you know you're kind of a natural learner and things just kind of are easy for you and certain things blah 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 mm -hmm. as a yeah. line too you'd be like yeah that's true you know you know you're not a heavy book learner like that's mm -hmm. harder for you you have to really focus on that right i mean you are in a way you're good at you're good at learning <laughs> thanks ma <laughs> but anyways i'll get ahead of myself but so profile yes. so type when we talk about those the higher uh uh higher aspects when we're talking about you know overarching themes mm -hmm. we know type is the the top right it's yep. because there's only five types you'll fall into one of those five categories mm -hmm. however with profile there's the six profile lines that create 12 profile combinations so pro so type generator manifesting generator mm -hmm. manifester projector reflector mm -hmm. that's actually how your aura functions in mm -hmm. the world so right. it is really your energetic way of moving through the world and it's what they say in the uh original transmission or traditional human design whatever you want to call it the type is the role you play if you're a manifester you're here to initiate get things into mm -hmm. action if you're a generator type that'd be generator manifesting generator you're here to help build you're a doer right if you're a projector you're a guide you manage mm -hmm. and if you are a, a reflector you reflect you mirror back so those are the roles that you're playing so everybody on the planet has one of those roles right mm -hmm. majority of them are builders now profile is really it's your like personality it seems more like to me it's like easily identifiable identifiable but it is really how you're going to do that how you're going to fulfill your role as a so generator, it's like, like as maybe projector. more of your character. Yeah, it's like the it's the character. It is the it's how you do your type in a sense. It's mm -hmm. how you yeah they they say it's like the clothes you put on as you play your role as the aura type. That's it's, how it's they your explain flair. it. Yeah, it's your way of doing things, mm -hmm. and so it's also so it's how you 
do life, but it's also how opportunities come to you. And it's also what people experience from you. And it's really at the level that a lot of people want to know about. It's what people want from you, especially if you're Mm -hmm. moving into a space of um, starting your own or starting or branching out into your own business or entrepreneurship or, or even within the roles you play now, this is how people are going to experience you. And it's, your magic way of of showing up and doing things and that's how they uh experience you because each line has a specific function so if we go through so first of all profile Mm -hmm. if you're unclear what we're talking about it is a combination of two numbers like i said there's one through six Mm -hmm. and it is derived from if you look at your body graph you'll see at the top of your chart on either side it has the the personality and design placements of the planets Mm -hmm. and so the sun and earth you'll see a number and then a decimal point and another number and that is the gate the hexagram number that Mm -hmm. you were born under and then the line so the energy expression of that gate because each gate has these six different energy Mm -hmm. expressions so You'll notice that your sun and earth, your sun and earth gates will have different gate numbers, but they'll have the same profile line. Okay, mm-hmm. that decimal point. So in my case, I'm a 14-4 and 8-4. So my first profile number is a line four. And on the other side, I'm a 59.1 and a 55.1. So that means the so other your, side of my profile is your first number comes from the right side, which is the personality Personality side side. Mm -hmm. second number is from the left side the design side correct right so Mm -hmm. but what we're going to look at today we're not going to go through all 12 profiles because that's a lot we took done that three episodes to go (laughs) through that but we are going to just real quick touch on let's see what you remember too touch on really the role that these lines play what they're known as and then we're going to kind of go through and look at well, there's a high side and low side to everything. There's a, you know, when you're really living your strategy and authority, how you're going to express it is really that high side of your profile. And then if you're not really following your body awareness, your strategy, authority, you're letting the mind run the show, mm-hmm. you're going to probably dip down into these more shadow behaviors. So, mm-hmm. so real quick, lines one through six, what do we know about line one? Oh, they love their information. They Give do. it to them. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the line one is known as the, well, traditional, do you remember? Come no. On. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> well, I think one of, I think, I'm, I think I remember the quantum name for it, which what I is think is the investigator. No, that's traditional. That's okay. the traditional. Yeah, investigator. Line one's known as the investigator, like you said. It's, I think in quantum, it's a resource. Resource? Oh, okay. Which is what they are. So line one is the foundation of the hexagram. So it's at the bottom of the hexagram. Mm-hmm. It's that first floor of the house. It yeah. is someone who loves knowledge, loves to gather as much knowledge as possible, and they are laying the foundation of safety and security for all of us. So they're very curious. They have an insatiable appetite for knowledge. These are people who are more book learners. Like I always say, the internet was made for us on the line one. Um, <laughs> it could also be your downfall. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, and so these are the people that are the resource in mm-hmm. your uh, community, your circle, whatever. They are the ones that are going to have the information. And they very much, they learn on their own. They're very introspective. They're very much focused inward. Okay. So line two. I think I remember both names for this one. Okay. So in traditional, I believe it's called the hermit. Mm -hmm. And in quantum, it's called the natural. Um, I don't think it's called the natural. It's called, uh, but it is a natural learner. You are correct. It is the, uh, (laughs) Surprised you don't know this. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of giving the the quantum human design. I don't names know why you weren't because you always give both names. Well, yeah, I do, but I don't know. I wasn't thinking about it this time. But uh, it is um, the responder, which is why I thought it might have been the responder, but I get it 
confused. Hey, because I get it, but I don't like it. I don't really like it either. Huh? And it's confusing with the whole like generator strategy and everything. It's responding. But anyway, yeah. so what I, you are aligned to, what do am, you know about the natural? The na it should be called the natural. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean... It is just very much a natural ability to do things. Mm -hmm. It sounds yeah. conceited, but like, <laughs> well, it's um, they they are they are the ones that they may get a little bit of information, but then they're like, okay, I know enough, and they'll just go try it, do it, whatever, mm -hmm. or find their own process. So I should say their own way of of doing things. They're here to really do. Th things that come easy to them because also in the gene keys he refers to the line too as the the dancer with mm. someone who it just it just comes naturally to him it's just fluid it's just movement and so <clears throat> they are meant to kind of just be in their own process and follow what is easy to them and just go deep so there's a lot there is a lot of it's not so much figuring out they're just kind of they call them the hermit mm -hmm. they just want to be kind of in their own space doing their own thing don't want to be bothered but then they will be called out by the people around them to share what it is that they know because they'll recognize the line to uh what do we say in the house anal analogy they're on so, the first floor they're the open windows right right yeah they're behind the window but the curtains are open so people can look in and see them and be like, oh, hey, you, I see what you're doing there. Why don't you come out and show us? Like, mm -hmm. that's the line, too. So they are these natural, easy learners, right? So they're here to, like, integrate their knowledge, their wisdom, and then be ready, rested, well taken care of, so that when they're called out, they're ready to mm -hmm. go. Okay. So... Yes. Line threes are. I cannot remember the name at all. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you love the name so much, though. Uh oh, it's the martyr. I thought that was line five. <laughs> That's the heretic. Heretic. Yeah, another great name. So line three is the martyr, or in quantum, it's the explorer. <laughs> that one I like that better than martyr. Yeah. What do you know about line three energy? Uh very much. They're kind of like a line one where they like to gather their knowledge, but it's more of a tactile hands in the clay, as we've said, kind of like trial. And we don't like to say error, but trial mm -hmm. and, and learn from. Exactly. Yeah. They're explorers like in quantum. They are experiential learners. As you said, they very much has to do with the this this world, the physical mm -hmm. world of like manipulating things and really yeah, messing up, trying again, making mistakes. That's what the line three energy is all about, which is being open to, to new things, trying everything out. And they won't really, I mean, they'll, like you said, they will uh, most likely as a line three have certain respect for other people's expertise or knowledge, but they won't rest on it. They are going to mm -hmm. have to always try, try things themselves. themselves. Exactly. <laughs> uh, because that's what they're here to help us with. They're here to see what works and what doesn't. And then really make sure that we all know that as well. They're here to mm -hmm. help us by doing the experimenting for us. So they don't have to, which I'm <laughs> glad because I don't necessarily <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> all right. So the line four. I don't remember the name either. <laughs> Opportunist. Oh, right. And then also the known quantum as, one's nicer. Uh, yeah, it's a stabilizer, I believe. Stabilizer. I remember our other analogy for this, not the house analogy for the line four, which is like the the oak tree, very sturdy, mm. and it'll sway. Well, you're mm -hmm. not going to change it. You're not going to. Well, that's it. that's more geared towards the four one in particular oh, myself, okay. but okay. there's elements there. Yes, because they are a stabilizing force. So they, oh, we forgot the line three would be the staircase would be right. going in the house analogy from the first floor to the second floor. It's that mm -hmm. hey, getting ready for the next. Kind of a bridge. Right. A bridge. 
<laughs> so the line four then is on that second floor. It's the foundation of the second floor. So mm -hmm. this is about foundations in relationships. It's getting to the bottom of what it means to be in relationships. So they are mm -hmm. a stabilizing force usually in the relationships around them. And so they are here, here to like be a part of a community and be the ones that help share uh, the knowledge and the experience of the lower trigram, lower trigram, the trigram, <laughs> to share the knowledge that's been gathered with the rest of their community. They start mm -hmm. preparing the way for that. Right. So that's a, it's a line four, line five. One name's a heretic. <laughs> yeah, you know that much. Yes, mm -hmm. the heretic or the, I think, quantum, uh, she calls them the visionary yes. leaders. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. And so this is one you, I think, you know a little bit about too, because you always like using the one phrase. The, my favorite phrase for it is like the mic drop moment. They oh, come no, in. I wasn't thinking of that one. Oh, but what were you thinking? The karmic mirror. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not that. No, that's not the phrase that I really like from that. It's something it's, else. Hmm. It's like the, it's when you just kind of. Oh, pass oh, the strangers of consequence. <laughs> that one, that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yes. the, but line five there, they have the mic drop moments. Like they're supposed to come in, tell people what they really need to hear and then mm -hmm. get out. Cause otherwise it can get a little messy. Well, that, that is true. Yeah, they are the ones that bring practical solutions, innovative ideas. They do serve as kind of this karmic mirror in the sense that they are, when you're talking about the mic drop moment, they are here to take the, the message that, or the information or the knowledge that was gathered from the lower trigrams and then beginning to be shared by the fourth line, then it universalizes the information. It, mm -hmm. it takes it everywhere global. So they are meant to impact people on a wider scale. Mm -hmm. And that's where that uh, uh, strangers of consequence term comes up because they are the ones that can cross cross paths with someone and just lay one little nugget of information at their mm -hmm. feet or point something out to someone i mean it could be one line one sentence yeah. one and, and it, it may not even somebody's seem, life it may not even see consequential to the little line mm -hmm. five they're just like hmm. yeah but they are called the heretic because there's a projection line on them as well they projection are projection field yes sorry projection field they are on that second floor and mm -hmm. they're more hidden the draw the curtains are drawn because mm -hmm. they they people are very drawn to them and because they think they have solutions or answers for them they think they can help them but they're not here to help everybody they're not mm -hmm. really they they kind of when that karmic mirror things is like you know they can reflect back to you what it is that needs to be healed in you May and that's why for that. yeah and that's why a lot of people are not <laughs> down with that that's yeah. where the heretic part comes on they have a new way of doing things new way of seeing things they provide solutions but people don't always want to hear them mm -hmm. and they might want to burn them at the stake okay so that's the line five <laughs> line six then my dear it's girl called the role model mm -hmm. and in I quantum don't. it's it's called yeah. the adept oh, right yeah i not remember that <laughs> <laughs> So what's what's the main thing about the line six that everybody talks about is they have the the triphasic life mm -hmm. got there and basically they're just here to be them <laughs> <laughs> themselves. Yeah. Well, yes, they learn the first uh, twenty nine thirty years they live as uh, line three experimenting, trialing, doing all the things, just getting into life in lots of different ways. Uh, and then after their Saturn return until about age 50, it's more of a on the roof phase mm -hmm. where they are kind of evaluating what they learn. They're integrating, they're living. This is when they build families or businesses. They're a little more, they're not so interested in 
being out there and doing all the things and learning all the stuff. They're ready to just mm -hmm. kind of like be on the roof and watch Chill, life. relax. Yeah, but it's not a completely inert state. One day we'll have to do an episode just fully on that. But, and then after 50, they come off the roof and this is when they've take all they've learned, all they've integrated and they've decided what works for them, what doesn't. And this is when they're that role model state where they're just like, this is me and this is how I do life. This is how I see it. And they embody that. And that's how they get that role model status. And they, they are in their own skin. And the line six is really to show us, you know, it takes everything that the other five lines have, have learned and expressed. And it's always looking forward to the, to the next hexagram, they say in the, in the I Ching. But this is somebody who is as they gather that knowledge in life, they are seen as like those wisdom keepers. They, they know. So anyways, so that was us trying to go really fast through the attributes of the I six lines. I think it was a good, nice little condensed, but still good information. I think yeah. It good. It's there's, if you want more depth, just go back through our profiles episodes. Like I said, we've done one on the line six and we've gone through every single profile. We've, we've done it all, but so today, like we were talking about, so those are the main points of it and the positive aspects in a way of these, like what their purpose is and how mm -hmm. they do life. And so I'm a 4-1, so I'm opportunist investigator, but that means I'm someone who's going to dig deep and go into all the knowledge and then bring it out to, to my community or to the mm -hmm. people around me. You're a 6-2, you're a young 6-2, so you're still very much in the phase of like, learning who you are, what works for you, what doesn't, what you might be good at, you know, all the things, right? So, mm -hmm. so as I said, I started thinking about this because I realized that in my own way, unknowingly, I had, well, I should probably wait until I get to my, my lines, but <laughs> I'll just wait. I'll wait a little bit to okay. see that I realized that it may be really acting more from kind of a fear shadow space sometimes in, in building this business and bringing this out into the world. Mm -hmm. um, even though I was saying I was doing pretty good, but I mean, everything's always changing. We always got to keep checking in and seeing how we're doing. Yep. Right. Yep. All right. So, so if we look at, like I said, if we're looking at this, we're looking at things that might be, showing up as behaviors because or because you are not trusting the flow of how the energy around you in the sense of you're not following your strategy and authority is the easy way to say it <laughs> you're not responding the way life the way you should mm -hmm. you're trying to get all up in your head which we know your head. your mind will lie to you all the time and it's where fear lives I mean, it lives in the spleen, but also all that mental anxiety. And, you know, if you find yourself like, I just, I have nothing to respond to. Things aren't happening. Or you feel like you're in a plateau or feeling bitter or you're feeling frustrated, all these things. There's looking at the strategy and authority, but there's also looking at your profile lines and see if some of these things are showing up or if you're acting in this way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So with the line one, hello, mm -hmm. I'm going to represent the line one today. Hello. <laughs> My name is Dana and I am an <laughs> over information gatherer. <laughs> yes. I am guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So really the line one being this foundation of information, knowledge, wanting to feel safe. That's how you feel safe. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, well, what do you think a shadow behavior there could be? A lot's too much information. <laughs> <laughs> well, they begin to fear. Well, yeah. So too fear much information knowing. gathering. Yeah. There is a fear of not knowing enough that you don't know enough. There's mm -hmm. a fear of the unknown of what's going to happen. And so what happens with the line one is they get stuck in information gathering mode. Mm hmm. Hello, I'm raising my hand. I've my husband been doing as well. that for years. Yeah. You are not alone. I do this every single day. 
and I have to stop myself. And they won't take action because they think they don't know enough. You can get mm -hmm. stuck in perfectionism, especially if you have some other markers in your chart that right. can get in your way. And so you are strong at gathering data and knowledge. You know how to do that. It makes you feel safe and comfortable. Mm -hmm. If I just know one more thing, if I just take one more class or, oh, I've got to, like I said, I read another book or article before. Like, oh, I'm going to go acting. look up this now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, like I said, I do this every day and I, I try to, I, I am try, I'm trying to get better at it in the sense that I realize I don't have to know everything about something in order for it to be useful to me in mm -hmm. a way, or to be able to, to share it. One of the things I'm doing right now is I'm kind of playing with this neurographic drawing, you know, which is revealing a lot and like probably why this why this all <laughs> came about about you know it's supposed to be this kind of stream of consciousness drawing mm -hmm. and i realized that i'm still like trying to control it in a way and so recognizing the shadow side of that line one of knowing that i will try to just keep gathering information mm -hmm. i've tried to gather less information about this one particular thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you told me you're trying to just flow with it instead of trying to know all about it. Yes, because it will get me in the space of like, oh, I'm doing it wrong. I, I mm -hmm. don't have all the information. I need to know exactly everything, but and I'll just take all the joy out of it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a line one, maybe you should look at where it is that you are maybe kind of resting in comfort in information gathering and realize that you probably have way more information than you're ever going to need or anyone else might need from you <laughs> because as a line one, you're going to have more information than anyone else. <laughs> it's very you. helpful for me in non line one. I do when I'm with you, I do use you as my Google. <laughs> and your husband too. You let him like do. do all the research. It's like, <laughs> Where are we going to go hike? Well, I know we're, we're going to see each other next week. And you're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, uh, I don't know. And you're opening, <laughs> you're asking me open-ended questions. <laughs> I know. As I was typing out those open-ended questions, I was like, ah, I don't know how to make this yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard. It I do is. it all the time. I realize how many yes or no questions I ask all day long. And then I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Well, I mean, I can't, but it's not, you're not incapable. <laughs> But yeah, so if you are a line one, just look at your own behaviors right now. And if you find yourself in a space where you're kind of feeling that stuck, are you stuck in information gathering mode? Mm -hmm. Because if you're following your strategy and authority, it will tell you when the right time is for you to share that information. And you've got to honor that and not let mm -hmm. your mind get in the way and say, oh, I just need to know one more thing. And mm -hmm. then I'll be ready to share. So that's the line one, just deepening that uh, trust with your strategy and authority that it's going to let you know. So line two, my dear. Hi. <laughs> Haley's, Haley is representing line two and line two shadows today. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I have my notes, but I don't know how to like really go through them without kind of hitting my bullet points here. So Okay. Well, would you like me to a quick overview of what the shadow yes. is? Yeah. Okay. Go with that. And then I'll share mine. As I said, natural learners that need time alone to process, they have to, they like spending time alone. They're hermits, as they say. Mm -hmm. So they like just kind of doing their own thing, want to be left alone. However, and that's important. There's two different kind of shadows there. There is this like, sometimes they're not honoring that line to, because there is two parts to your profile, a, a more outer a pro uh, expression the mm -hmm. the upper trigram you're a six two and a lower so uh, especially if you're like a two four this is a really difficult balance of being out in the world and mm. giving yourself time to rest now for yourself this isn't a problem in your situation because you work at home you're pretty much mm -hmm. in control of your time but for those yeah. that aren't or they're they've got families they've got jobs they've got responsibilities that they're aligned to they need to make sure that they are giving themselves enough time to just be with themselves and follow their own 
interests and what it is that is comes easy to them, what's natural to them, what is something that, um, you know, they really don't have to think about that much. They just are mm-hmm. in the zone because that's the thing that people will probably come to them uh, for. And it may not be like, I need crocheting from you, <laughs> <laughs> but it may be, oh, your focus or your skill at this or your whatever. You don't know what mm-hmm. form it's going to be because you're lying too. You don't know right what people are going to call you out for Mm -hmm. now on the other side of that Mm -hmm. there's also the tendency to spend too much time in isolation too much time Mm -hmm. hiding away not letting anybody see you not and not only that but like when the people come to you this is a very overbroad uh description of it but Mm -hmm. when you are recognized you you don't take it to heart. You don't believe the projection. Someone tells you you're good at things. You're like, no, I, I don't see it. And mm-hmm. you don't do anything <laughs> about it. But yeah. generally, if someone's coming to you and telling you, you know, I see this, can you help me? That means that is something that you are <laughs> a natural mm-hmm. and you can't help us. So let's hear yeah. what you have to say. I feel like I'm in that space. I am. Second one? Yeah, I am very much. Yeah. In Hermited? my cave. I am hermiting hard. <laughs> <laughs> like even when you were joking about flying back with me after we're going to see each other in Charleston, I was like, but Presley will be gone. That's my time alone. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I know. That's why I didn't push it. I was like, she might just want to be alone. That's fine. <laughs> but but I I feel like it's it's becoming too alone because I mm. don't have any interaction with anyone to pull me out of it right oh one thing i was reading in the notes is not not to let the desire to be alone to keep mm-hmm. you from building connections mm-hmm. and that's i think the spot that i'm in yeah is i am just kind of like i said hermiting hard mm-hmm. and then I, so i was also reading part of like what the line two is here to do and it's like to integrate the wisdom and the knowledge and experience mm-hmm but I don't feel like I'm doing anything like that. Yeah. And then I was like, well, maybe I'm not thinking of it in the right way because this is also my unconscious line. So I was like, Mm -hmm. maybe, and I just don't see it as well. Yeah. A lot of this is, is you don't, I think you're through this last two years and exploring human design and everything, it's become easier for you to relax into that. But if I think like I always say, When I think back at, I always use the example of your, um, your high school years of being called out and recognized. So it was like you're lying to and your projectiveness when people would say, Hey, Haley, you seem to know what needs to go where, or when we need to do this, maybe you should take the lead, you know, Mm -hmm. cause you, you can lead and you do know those things, but you're, um, you know, you don't always know the exact thing that it is maybe back then what you were good at, um, mm-hmm. especially with, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think about the whole like yearbook thing, you know, it's like mm-hmm. you were just kind of in your own space learning how to uh, work on the yearbook, right? Mm-hmm. First, you were just like in that class or whatever it is. I don't yeah. know what it, it was yeah. a class and I just got put in it basically. <laughs> Yeah. And so you were just kind of seeing, I mean, it, it's, it's all tw- intertwined together. So this, you can't really separate the projectorness right. from the line two in you, but you were recognized as, as a projector, but also for things that came easy to you in that process, which was you have a good eye for design and detail yeah. and you don't necessarily recognize that as a because strength it is so easy yeah it is very easy like i used to always tell you you're you're very creative and you have a very like i said you have a very good eye for design i remember even talking to you like did you really think about graphic design as a career when you didn't know what you want to do and you're like eh. but that's also something you're interested in as far mm-hmm. as how things look and how yeah. they present and you have a natural flair for that natural ability for that that you said you don't see it necessarily as a gift or as a talent, mm-hmm. but <laughs> trust me, <laughs> as someone who doesn't, 
<laughs> I, I mean, mean, I have my own style and quirky way of doing things, <laughs> but I don't think anybody would ever say I have a way of putting things together <laughs> when it comes to aesthetics. <laughs> yeah. I have to always ask. You don't ask. Mm -mm. But it is another thing that I did think of, and I thought of this last night before I com at all knew what our topic was going to be today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, I was like, my mind was just wandering, and I ended up thinking of college, and it was during one of my, one of my econ classes. I really understood the material, and so I just ended up tutoring some of my classmates, like, just kind of tutoring them, and I really enjoyed doing that because I really mm -hmm. enjoyed helping them understand it, and I was like, mm -hmm. that that came to me again while I was thinking of our topic mm -hmm. for today yeah and you are good at explaining things too or, or helping people tutor you've done that a couple times now <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so if you're you are a lot is there anything else you want to add before i mm. oh well, maybe another thing where mm -hmm. i saw some shadow in myself is mm -hmm. more of like i don't maybe don't always wait for my wisdom to be called out and then that's a possibility of another spot in my design where my bossiness comes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And I think a little bit might be the, the line six too. We'll get to that in a minute, but yeah. well, now you know that you're hermiting out or you're hermiting out, you're hermiting too much that mm -hmm. you are isolating. Cause that's one of the things is, mm -hmm. is isolating a little bit too much. And so you could ask yourself, well, what are you going to do in the future? What are some things that could get you more involved out there? And like, you don't have to go out and socialize like a line four or anything, but you do kind of have to maybe share more. It is what you're interested in and, and what getting out and trying, you're also a line six, trying other things to see like, what works for you is mm -hmm. a sense of, are you interested in it? What are you naturally drawn to that could also like, start i mean to be honest you work at home and it's mm -hmm. very hard to be seen you know being there all the time because you don't really necessarily want to spend a lot of time online anyhow so you know what i mean is it is it is going to be a delicate balance of trying to find enough time out in the world and also <laughs> not <Yeah>. overdoing it <laughs> mm -hmm. but you never know okay yeah. so let's 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 go on to the line three Mm -hmm. As we said, those experimenters exploring, they have a fear of failure. You know, it can, they, so, uh, they are meant to try things, but also there could be a lot of conditioning as a line three of maybe failing a lot mm -hmm. or making mistakes. And you tend to get kind of fearful of trying things because, yeah. or exploring because it didn't always work out. And your parents or your siblings or your classmates, whatever, your bosses, people have been like, oh, you why don't know, you just stick with something. Why don't you stick with something? You're always making so many mistakes. They, they get quite a lot of that put on them. Well, oh, you're doing that now. Well, pfft. especially if you put on top of it, if you're a manifesting generator, it'd be like, really, what are you doing now? <laughs> Type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so there's that one side of the those shadow behaviors of like being afraid to get out there and try new things and keep exploring and letting other people's opinions about how you're doing life get in the way of you exploring and learning. Mm -hmm. But you can also cause a lot of chaos to <laughs> line threes can because there can also be a tendency of really not sticking with things running away too too soon it's the bonds made and broken is what they say about the line three in relationships it's like cut and run you know this isn't working i'm out of here not sticking mm -hmm. with it and that's also a shadow behavior is that you're just like Ugh, i don't want there's so many things i want to be trying this one's a little bit maybe more challenging or requires more commitment from me, but I don't know if it's worth it. I don't want to stick with it. Mm -hmm. There's that behavior as well, or not bringing things to completion sometimes. And so the antidote, I guess, in a way mm -hmm. is looking at things that you're being drawn to, called to, or you're interested in, you want to try. If it starts to get a little bit 
more complicated. Think about how you entered into this new experience. Were you following your strategy and authority? Mm -hmm. If you, if you're a generator type and your sacral was really like, yes, and your emotional authority and over time, it's like, yes, this is something I really want to commit to be it a relationship or a a job or whatever it is to, to stick it out, to Mm -hmm. keep showing up and experimenting and seeing where it takes you. Cause if you're, if your strategy and authority led you there, it's probably something it's you, you should mm-hmm, should be involved in. However, if you just jumped into something for the sake of, well, I was just bored. I want to go over here. I and was try here. Something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe reevaluate that. That might be a good time to cut and run, but mm-hmm. really evaluate how you got there. And if it's worth it for you, the, the end, you know, what you're working towards. If you think that's something you really want to look at it that way, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So that's something to consider as a line three, uh, line four. Hello. I'm a line four. Everybody's <laughs> line four. <laughs> so line four is being about relationships and foundations and knowing about relationships and having the desire to create stability. They are fearful also of moving on to new things without knowing what's coming next. So full transparency me here i have a hard time moving on sometimes because (laughs) i'm super foundational (laughs) i got all the foundations ready to go and definitely this is where i was talking about the podcast is i started thinking about this line four and as a four one in this aspect of not knowing what's coming letting that hold me back being afraid of seeing what could be available out there because they're mm-hmm. inherently afraid of change because change is destabilizing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going to happen. Right. And so you could, in my case, you could gather more information, feel like it's just, I don't have enough information yet. I try to be overprepared for every scenario. You've got to know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And in that regard, with that shadow behavior, it i can feel i'm at the point now with especially with like with the podcast and where to take this business from here it has to be expanded a little bit more Uh, i was talking about my email list i haven't been Mm -hmm. very good at cultivating those relationships i've not been because i know that deep down i think the next evolution of this is bringing more people in and community in some Mm -hmm. way whatever that looks like and I'm afraid to do that because I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't <laughs> know how it's going to be received. I don't know if I can do it. You know, like I have mm-hmm. all these fear thoughts coming up in my head that I'm going to do it wrong or I'm not going to offer what people want or I'm not going to be able to keep up with it or I'm going to start it and then hate it. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. And so I keep showing up here with you. You're my safe spot. Hi. You know, it's like, this is the thought I have of like, Oh, I'm committing to the podcast and I'm committing to all this and I'm doing all these things, but I'm just staying right there in that safe right on the zone edge mm-hmm, behind the line. Um, because another one of the shadows there for a line four is a fear of rejection because relationships are very important. Mm-hmm. And so in that regard, like I just said, you could hold yourself back from the people you're meant to influence and what you said earlier about line two is like, oh, I don't mean to sound conceited or whatever, but that's, I can understand that feeling because that's how I'm feeling right now is that, oh, I'm holding myself back from the people that need me. <laughs> it sounds terrible <laughs> to say it like that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But, but it's, it's really, it's about me. It's about me being afraid of, um, you know, put the call out there and nobody comes. It's just like, mm-hmm. oh no, I don't want to be rejected. And so- yeah. That's a that's a line for shadow behavior of being overprepared, afraid to change, and also being afraid of being rejected. And so mm-hmm. you don't connect with the people that you're really meant to influence because that's how the information that you gather or learn gets out there is through your network because you're a networker, an opportunist. Anything to say about that, Haley? <laughs> No. (laughs) Does that sound about right? Yes. That sounds like a line four. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So moving on to line fives. So -hmm. as we said, the heretics, they've got that projection field around them. So 
they are, there's a couple things that can happen. They fear really of not being truly seen or heard for themselves and being subject to false expectations of others. So there can be a lot of hiding out for a line five. They can just isolate in a way where it feels safe for them because maybe they have been burned before of being that karmic mirror, being out in the world and imparting what they know and it maybe didn't work out that well. So they they can get really fearful of the expectations and projections of others and they hide out. Mm -hmm. And then they are not there to take those positions, excuse me, of leadership that they're intended for. On the other side of that as well, another shadow that shows up in a different way is not having healthy boundaries with people, which I always stress to line ones when I have readings with them is, line fives. I'm sorry, line fives. I was thinking of a five one in particular <laughs> line fives because they, like I said, they are going to, it's like, they can't help it. They know, they know things, they know what needs to be done or said, they have the solutions, mm -hmm. they're problem solvers really. But if people aren't ready to hear it, it can be very painful because it, it really damages, the, you know, they can damage their reputations. They can, that's what they always talked about in the traditional stuff. That burning at the stake is really the sacrifice of your reputation suffering of people really mm. trying to hurt you and destroy you because okay. you, you aren't living up to what they thought you were going to do for them. Right. right. But no, they're just wrong. So. <laughs> they're just wrong. <laughs> You're line five. You agree with me. So they need to have healthy boundaries with people because they could run the risk of somebody saying, oh, I need your help with this. Can you help me? And they immediately say yes, mm -hmm. because they're not really aware of what their own worth is, where their strengths lie. And so they just let anybody in and it depletes them. So they really need to have healthy boundaries to, so that also lets them lean more fully into who they are because then they can understand more clearly when they see it coming at them who it is they can help and mm -hmm. who it is they can't and it just kind of like you're gonna have to kind of keep some people even they might even I'm be sorry, family I can't help you <laughs> they might even be family i just need to make sure we're not getting too caught up in mm -hmm. that so were you gonna say something about line five no, no, okay. but I mean, it just makes now that I know that Ian is a line five, mm -hmm. I see a lot your, of this. Your in brother, him. Yeah, yeah, your brother. Oh yeah, and it's he's my case study for line fives because we are <laughs> in close relationship. He lives here with us. I can observe him. Um, <laughs> I have to go to his room to observe him. He's always in his room, hiding away. <laughs> but no, um, but yes, he definitely he does hide himself. For sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he's been burned a lot, but I just think he, he has doesn't... had some irritation with him and daddy specifically. I think daddy throws it a lot on him. Yeah. But I think he doesn't quite know or really understand his own. I think he, he says he has a lot of like anxiety in the sense of he's always worried about what people are thinking, mm -hmm. which would really be sort of the line five behavior because he's, you know, <sighs> around us he has no problem expressing his no. thoughts and his mind and telling us what we need <laughs> yes and how and we giving should us do information things. that is just made up sometimes <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, well that's just him being fun that's his line three but he's a three five and so he 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 definitely lives in his line three a lot uh, with trying new things. He has a vast array of interests and he's always mm -hmm. learning new things by trying them out himself, but he's not doing the externalizing so much. And I think he will for sure as he gets older, but you know, it's really a matter of knowing his own self-worth and knowing where he can help and where he can't. I don't, I think he's probably got healthy boundaries. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably a little too rigid. <laughs> I keep poking them. 
But so if you're a line five, really working on how healthy is your self-worth? Is there anything that you need to kind of resolve there to uh, be able to handle those projections of others and know what it is you can mm -hmm. um, do, but also making sure you have healthy boundaries. Okay. Whew. Getting to the finish line, line six. <laughs> Ooh. So those line sixes, you guys are the role models. And I always say that the line sixes quite often feel they have this mission in life to complete. And, and they have always reflected that back to me. They feel that because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> deep inside, there's this knowing that life is more than just, you guys see it deeper than everybody else. It's not just surface level life. Like you feel this because it is innate in you and born in you that when you mature and as you get older, you are going to be that person that people will be looking to as a role model because you will be embodying your full expression of who you are. It's who you are is your mission. <laughs> it's that's it. Right. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. as such, there is a lot of impatience in line uh, sixes. They're always wanting to get to the thing to you know because <laughs> they fear <laughs> that they're going to fail at their life purpose yeah. how does that feel to you how does that <laughs> land well first of all in my notes here i have needs to be living in alignment with your life purpose okay mm -hmm. drive to make the world a better place okay mm -hmm. fear to fail at your life purpose and then i have fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's your fear <laughs> But no, I totally, I totally get that. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it is very much, I feel that I am like, have this bigger purpose, but at the same time, mm -hmm. I, I don't feel the impatience of it. Mine is more of like, like I'm frozen because I don't mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. what is the right thing. And I mm -hmm. literally on my next page, I was like, I'm supposed to be living authentically and showing people that, but at the same time, what benefit is someone else going to get from seeing how I live my life now? Is how I'm living now right? Am I in the path <laughs> of my life purpose? What if I'm not? How do I know? <laughs> it's, it's like, All it's the questions. Split, it's the split of life purpose is just being you, but what if I'm not being the me I need to be? And <laughs> I started spiraling and then that's why I colored for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like, oh <laughs> but that's good well like i said you are in the uncomfortable phase i think of the line six <laughs> of well it's uncomfortable if you know you're a line six i think it can feel that way i would imagine it would feel that way because hearing that you've got you're gonna destined to be this role mm -hmm. model right mm -hmm. but you feel like it's so far away how do I know I'm going to be the right role model? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do they want a role model? Why do they want to look up to me? It doesn't matter. It, it really, <laughs> there's no like one thing that is going to, because also, yeah, you're a six two, you're a projector, but everything in your design is unique from any other six two projector, mm -hmm. which I know another six two projector in the off the roof phase totally different people, right? You have certain yeah. things as a six, two that are very similar mm -hmm. a lot of times. And I think when I say impatient, it's like, I think it can show up in lots of different ways. Whereas you might say like, I learned this thing. I'm a six, two. I learned this thing and I know it, but oh my gosh, what do I do with it? Should I do something with it? Is somebody going to benefit from it? Like you were saying, what are they going to know from me? <laughs> what is it they need to know? You're like, just kind of always with that goal in mind of I have a mission to complete, there's this just inner drive, this urgency within you that can keep you from keep you from doing 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 the parts of your <laughs> profile that we all benefit from, which is taking the time to experience life, to observe life, to integrate what it is that you've learned. It's trying to rush through it to get to the end of something, but not like being a part of the journey. So like if you show up at, you know, your last day, but you don't know what it is you experienced in your whole life because you were so busy getting to the end, mm -hmm. <laughs> you really end up kind of not fulfilling your purpose because your purpose is to live life as you. 
and all the different facets of it. And Mm -hmm. it's not going to look like how anybody else necessarily does it because you may pick from here and pick from there and pick from here and pick from there, but it's going to be how you do things. Does that help? I mean, yeah, but that's still, (laughs) it's a lot. It is. Well, you just need to relax. (laughs) (laughs) See, because you're feeling impatient. (laughs) (laughs) But then I'm also my line too with the hermiting. I'm like, I'm not, I, if it's, it's like almost this need that I, I feel like I have to be doing something special. Yeah. Well, I think also part of the problem is, is you spend a lot of time with me <laughs> in the sense that um, I'm a lot older than you. I'm your mother. I love you. All that <laughs> other stuff. But um, I bet if you spent some more time around your contemporaries and your peers, <laughs> They might be able to point out, well, I mean, think about your friends and what they look to you for. You do have friends. They do always say, oh, I come to Haley like your best friend. What does she usually come to you for? It's like advice. Advice. (laughs) Your your what? Guidance. (laughs) Guidance. You're grounded. You're solid. You're steady. You're like you you observe you you see things that necessarily they don't see them, <laughs> themselves because you're a projector <laughs> <laughs> so it is a tendency to to feel that impatience and maybe you just need to just let yourself chill and experience life because especially at the phase you're in if you're off the roof and you're feeling impatient um you know i would suggest that I definitely think an off the roof phase, that sense of impatience is the same root of feeling like you haven't quite figured it out yet, or you're going to fail that mission, or you need time. But I think you would probably still be in that phase, or not in that phase, but in that mindset, that fear mindset that, well, what would happen if I just followed my strategy and authority and see where life takes me and see what people are wanting from me, you know, see what it is that interests me and how it is I can help them. Cause you're going to be a line six is going to be a four, six, a six, two, or a six, three, right? Mm-hmm. There's not many line six combination out there. So that means a lot of people are going to be looking to that guidance in different ways, whether for a six, two, you're going to be a natural, the four, six, you still have that six line component to you, but it's going to be, you know, in your immediate communities and people and all that other stuff. And the six threes, they're always going to be trying, trying, trying. <laughs> they're, they're yeah. lifelong learners. They're always going to be kind of, Lots of trying. bump bumping into life, but they're also the people of six, three in particular are the ones that show us that it's okay to keep um, trying new things and keep exploring. You know, you're a mm-hmm. six, two, you're going to show us that it's okay to follow what it is that interests you and what you what comes to you easy. I mean, you've got the life path of like most, I would think fight against it their whole lives of trying to do everything else that feels harder or it should feel harder. I should work more at this or whatever. But as a six, two, you're designed to have the life path of where things follow the easy path, follow what comes to you naturally. Don't worry about if it measures up to X, Y, Z, or the expectations of society. It's just like, you're going to be supported if you follow what feels good to you, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. you've still got a million questions. You got your defined head and Ajna. You're going to always be asking the questions, but you, you will be okay. <laughs> you just got to trust the divine timing. You got to follow your strategy and authority and just learn to chill a little bit. All you line sixes out chill. there. <laughs> sure. On the outside, on the inside, you're like, <laughs> All right. So that's, that's, that's in a nutshell, just touching on profile, Mm -hmm. what some of those shadow behaviors could be showing up in your life. You see Haley and I are not immune to experiencing these things ourselves, but just encourage you to, you know, you can go back and listen and maybe 
kind of contemplate it again. You might find new nuggets along the way. Like I said, you can also uh, listen to the other episodes we have on profile, and uh, those would be good ways to get a little more clarity around that. And if you're, if you really can't get it yourself and you really need some help, I'm always here and available for, uh, readings to help walk you through Mm -hmm. that and see maybe where we could help you out in getting unstuck and more effectively living in alignment with your profile and your strategy and authority. So do we feel complete for that, with that for now, Haley? (laughs) Yes. So you know what that means. The incarnation crosses a week. That's right. We're, we're going to wrap up today's episode with another installment of the incarnation cross of the week. And today's incarnation cross brought to you by me um, <laughs> is, sorry, I'm trying to touch my microphone. I'm not, I'm, my hands are starting to want to fidget with things. Okay. Uh, not hit my microphone and not fidget with things that make noise in the microphone. Okay. This week we have the right angle cross of the unexpected two. Oh, this consists of on the personality side of the chart. It means your son is in gate 31 influence, gate of influence. Your mm-hmm. earth is in gate 41, the gate of contraction. Okay. And then on the design side, your son is in gate 27, gate of caring, mm-hmm. and uh, your earth is in gate 28, the game player. I always love the okay, name of that gate. Have influence, contraction, caring, and the game player. Mm-hmm. Okay. So and let's try it's out. the unexpected. It's pretty good. I think. Sounds it's unexpected. <laughs> so if you were born under this cross... Your life's purpose involves getting ready for unseen leadership roles that might come your way as people acknowledge your influential nature and inherent desire to help and nurture others. You are meant to explore life, acquire knowledge, and share the insights gained from your previous experiences and challenges. The difficulties you faced in the past act as seeds for discovering new potentials and opportunities. By redefining what truly matters, you lay the foundation for new beginnings that transcend past struggles. You are here to take the lead in navigating towards a brighter future, guided by the wisdom gathered from your personal journey and your dreams for a better tomorrow. Oh, how lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's an experience unexpected in the sense like be ready you never know what's coming but you can't help it people are going to come to you because you've got vision you've got you influence got caring. you're caring you got moxie. and you're you're <laughs> adventurous you're ready to get that's what the game players like adventurous they're ready to get in the game like let's go like let's try it out so anyways there you go Ta-da. another episode of the human design hive podcast <laughs> Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. so all right, we will leave it there. And once again, we really appreciate everybody out there listening. Mm-hmm. If you ever want to see our silly faces as we talk to each other, you can always catch us over on YouTube too, where we have a video version of the mm-hmm. podcast. And uh, until then, uh, go watch take Survivor. Care of yourself. Go watch Survivor. Go, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, take care of yourselves. And bye for now, Haley. Love you. Bye. You made it all the way to the end of today's episode, so you must have liked what you heard. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode, and perhaps leave us a good review. And if you know someone who wants to dig into all things human design with us, make sure you share the Human Design Hive podcast with them. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for listening.